little recap. We built a cradle. We removed all the stringers. We've been grinding out the inside of the bilge. And we have a little wow, bit of After today, I should be able to finish this grinding. So I gotta grind the through holes. Cut it out. Well, we found a rotten spot late last night. You're taking care of it. Uh, you know, everything takes more time than you think it will. Every single time. We would just stop finding damn surprises all the time. If we're going to do the job, we're going to do it right. We're gonna put a bulkhead into this whole back of the kitchen and it's gonna go down, it's gonna run across the hall and it's gonna tie in with the roof and the posts here. So that way we take a lot of load off this back end. And then have the new stringers. We've laid up new fiberglass and bilge in and outside. Yep. And uh, yeah. Oh, it looks so good. The bilge looks so disgusting before. And once we have this all fiberglassed up and new stringers and new bulkhead here, it's going to be super out with the strong. Insurance. Wow, so exciting. All the like nastiest work is over. Finishing touches and rebuild. Oh, yeah. High five on that one. Christoph's just been experimenting with um, how many layers we want to do because um, the catalyst that you add into the resin creates heat and the more layers and the more catalyst, the more heat that it produces. So you kind of need the layers to dry and cure in between each application. Wow, crazy. This must be warm too. Yeah, this is, this is putting out a lot of heat. Yeah, that's long now. And that's all dependent on humidity and temperature, but also how much catalyst you put in, which determines how fast it will cure. So yeah, that's way too much catalyst. You can't do free. So there's so many variables to this process that we've been learning, and we were so thankful for the help of um, Stratus who works for Valet Yacht Services across the way. Who owns, who owns Valet Yacht Services? Just across um, the street in the boatyard from us. And um, yeah, he's been a huge help in kind of teaching us how to fiberglass because we've never really done it, but we have a lot of fiberglassing to do in the boat. We have the whole inside of the hull, essentially, at least the whole bilge and the structural components, bulkheads and then the whole outside of the boat, the entire outside of the boat. So we have a lot of fiberglassing to do, so we're trying to figure out the perfect ratios that we want to use and just get comfortable with the layup and how it reacts. Big learning curve for us. So this is chop mat and this is uh, 1708. And that's what we're using. Ooh, look at this. First sample, how's it feel? Hot. Let this me test is, it. Uh, definitely getting hot. Unfortunately. Oh yeah. So we're one hour in. That was. 
it's definitely one hour quicker than expected because we were supposed to have two hours of work time with it. And this was only two layers. And this is already uh cooling. This is already cooling down. So this we could layer. now lay up another layer. Like this. So two mats. But like did this you did you feel layers. it when it was already hot? No. But I can tell that this is cooling down already. And so this is two layers and the other one is four. Four layers and this is much hotter. Way much. Like this, uh Oh yeah. It's like a nice back heater. So unfortunately we don't have a thermostat to test how hot it actually gets. So we need to get that. Yeah, we have one at home. We have to lay up a trial and constantly, like maybe every 20 minutes, measure the temperature. And then we get a curve of when it starts to get hot, what's the hottest temperature, and then when it comes down. Depends on how you mix the cattle. We can hang both rolls of uh, chop mat and 1708 in the trailer so it's our you know proper storage place it already sounds super strong eh? it's crazy it's mm -hmm. just from like a piece of fabric it's been one hour it turns a piece of cloth that's like super flexible into basically a hard piece of plastic And what does it say? Flip it over. One, two, three, four millimeters. So. Four millimeters for four layers. So one layer is a millimeter. Right? Oh, that's great. The first layer has 1.5. Ounce. Chop map. Second layer is the 1702. 1708. And then do we just repeat this? 1.5 ounce. Chop mat again. And then 1708. 1708 again. And this Can is. Can you see the difference? Chop mat versus. 4 mils. The woven stuff. Seventeen oh eight. Chop mat. So you said that's four layers. So that's exactly this twice, right? Yeah, this is this layer. That's what that is, and that's four mils. Each layer is a mil. Oh, I'm learning this. This is good. There you have it. Do you want something from the liquid store? Yeah, you're fine. Can of weasels. Can of weasels? Can of weasels. This marks the beginning of our fiberglassing journey. As we explored the processes, materials, curing times, and all the variables involved, we started with the small repairs. This hands-on practice would help us refine our techniques and ensure everything was finely tuned before progressing to the larger sections. We conducted extensive research and sought professional advice before starting, as this was our first experience working with fiberglass. In the first few days, we absorbed a wealth of knowledge and began to feel increasingly confident with the procedures involved. We began by catalyzing small batches of resin to avoid wasting this expensive material. As we gained experience and learned how much working time we had, we gradually progressed to larger batches. Of course, depending on the size of the job. The biggest learning curve when working with fiberglass is understanding how much catalyst, i.e. hardener, to add to the resin as this initiates a chemical reaction called polymerization. This reaction is crucial for the curing process, transforming the resin from a liquid into a solid. The process generates heat, known as an exothermic reaction, which can accelerate curing but requires careful management to prevent overheating. As the resin cures, it gains strength and rigidity, 
effectively bonding with the fiberglass layers to create a durable composite material. This means we had limited time to complete or work before the bonding process began, or at worst was already completed. The amount of catalyst directly affects the resin's working time or pot life the window during which the resin remains workable before hardening. This was a key reason we conducted effective trials before fiberglassing the actual hull. I mean, if you kind of, like, you want to press and then... Because if any of this, you work the air in. Personally, what I was using is, um, like a scraper, like a plastic scraper. Yeah, a batch, batch one. And I really like that. Yeah, yeah. Laying big pieces of glass. Yeah. It's gonna be so tricky. Using too little catalyst can lead to incomplete curing, while too much can result in a rapid cure that doesn't allow sufficient time to work effectively. Factors like temperature and humidity also impact the process. Overall, mastering the use of catalyst is essential for the successful application and performance of fiberglassing projects. Bubble busting is another crucial step in ensuring the fiberglass application is free from trapped air, which can lead to delamination or a weak bond overall. Properly eliminating air bubbles enhances the integrity of the laminate and ensures a high quality finish. Yeah, he's gonna roll it out. Yeah, and he's gonna roll it out, and then you'll see. When you lay up materials like chop mat and 1708 in succession, this process is often referred to as a stack up or laminate schedule. These terms describe the specific arrangement and layering of different fiberglass materials to achieve the desired strength and characteristics in the laminate. When you lay up materials like chop mat and 1708 all at once, this technique is commonly known as a wet layup or a one shot layup. This approach involves applying multiple layers of fiberglass and resin in a single operation. Well, this looks like worse than before with all these black spots in there. <laughs> yeah, I guess the marker is not good to use. Well, what else are you going to use? Can I have this bubble bus real quick? As you can see, the surrounding area around the through holes also required patching. Kristoff started by filling the small holes left by the original through holes before proceeding with the larger patch over the top. Uh, cut another five ball off, no, okay. just cut the layers from here and down, and every time you cut, you cut this one. Our friend Eric had some experience fiberglassing on his own 34-foot Catalina, so we were thrilled to have his helping hands on board. Yeah, I should know. We met Eric during the purchase of Yare. In fact, some of you might recognize him from a previous episode. We've been helping our friends that we just met. They just bought this boat and we sold them that rudder. It was time to get back to the layup. The rot in this particular area extended deep, reaching all the way into the core near the last layers of fiberglass. This required a significant amount of small patchwork using wet layups, transitioning from chop mat to 1708 and so on and so forth. This approach involves applying multiple layers of fiberglass and resin in a single operation, ensuring strong adhesion between the layers without requiring additional curing time in between. This method improves bond quality and minimizes the risk of air bubbles or delamination. It was a tedious process, alternating between chop mat and 1708, with 
plenty of bubble busting and mixing of resin in between. Each layer got slightly bigger, so required slightly more time. Eventually, we completed a total of 12 layers of alternating between both types of fiberglass. So at this point, we are removing uh, one through hole right over here. That's the kitchen drain, sink drain, one through hole. Then we eliminate the second through hole here, which was just a that sensor. Then there was a through hole here in the repair that we already patched here over. There was another through hole, so we got one, two, three. And then we're closing off another two through holes right in here. The big one for the gray water tank and another small one that was actually hooked up to the gray water tank and that was just capped off. So we are removing one, two, three, four, five through holes. That's a lot. And we're actually gonna remove one more. That's the salt water inlet for the diesel engine because we're going full electric. So we're not going to need that one anymore, so it's six, six through holes that we're closing off. If your shipyard or your boatyard gets you to do that, that's $3,000 a through hole that they charge to no way, really? eliminate. Yep. $3,000? $3,000, yeah. That's what they quote it. And that was that. Our initial fiberglassing test weekend was complete. And thankfully, everything went smoothly. But it was time for one final cleanup before moving on to the next steps. Dust still lingered from the grinding, and dirt was being tracked in every time we moved in and out. It was essential to give the area a thorough cleanup before starting the more serious, larger fiberglassing work. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It's one free, easy way you can help support this channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time. This is going to be one of the strongest Catalinas out there. Probably. It's oh, yeah, be, uh, for sure. We're going to up a little coastal cruiser. Do something that's a little bit more. Won't just be coastal cruiser. It's well, gonna be like the electric ocean cruiser. Tesla driven. First stop, Hawaii. Maybe a quick stop in Mexico. Who knows?